right, we are graphing polynomials that are already factored. We're going to uh, graph perhaps when they're not factored, but this is already factored. And we're going to take this and we're going to graph what this looks like. Now, the word zeros is a fancy word, a different word for x-intercept. Now, why is a zero and an x-intercept, why, why are they called that? And that's because if you put a number in for x and it makes what's inside the print zero, the answer zero, that's why it's called that. So if I look at the first factor, what number would I plug in for x that would make that zero? So the answer is positive one. You're going to know that factors, that's what's inside the parentheses with x, and zeros, they're opposite numbers. Just like here, what makes it zero? The opposite of positive two. Negative two, the opposite number makes it zero. Now, multiplicity, that's what that's short for. I'll write it out. Multiplicity tells me how many times does that factor repeat? So x minus one, it's the exponent that tells me how many times it repeats. So x minus one has an exponent of one. There's only one of them. The next one, x plus two, notice we have two of those. That's what the multiplicity is. If this multiplicity is odd, it will cross the x-axis. If it's even, it's gonna bounce on the x-axis and not cross over. So we're going to start there on our graph. So can we find positive 1? Can I find negative 2? The next thing I'm going to skip to is uh, the leading term. Really, another way to say this is the power term. It's probably a better way. It is what it is. How do I know the power term? Is I got to multiply this out. So if you expanded this and it was multiplied, no parentheses, you would take x times x squared and that would be the most powerful term. So the power term here is x cubed by multiplying x times x squared. So if I multiplied it out, the most powerful term would be x cubed. What does that tell me? It's positive. That means the right end goes up. It's odd, which means the left end goes down. They go in opposite directions. So I can understand this on the graph from these two. I know the right end goes up. I know the left end goes down. So I already know the intercepts and what, where the ends go. In between these intercepts is a turning point. So to know that turning point, first of all, the y-intercept is when you plug in 0 for x and solve it. So I'm just going to do that quick. So 0 subtract 1. 0 plus 2 and then square it. So I have to square first. So 2 squared is 4 and then 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. We're going to use that y-intercept as an approximate turning point and now we have the graph. Did I go to negative 4? I went to negative 5. Let me just make it so big so I understand it should have really been negative 4 right there. So we're going to use that as a turning point. So maximum, see where it bounced right there? So at uh, negative 2, it just bounced. It didn't cross over. It creates a turning point. That's a maximum. So at negative 2 and 0, we have a turning point. We also have a turning point at the y-intercept, which is at 0 and negative 4. Done. Let's try another one, number two. All right, x. What number can I plug in for x to make it zero? And it's a zero. So if I take out the x and put in zero, zero times any number is going to equal zero. What's the exponent on x that you can't see? That's odd. That means at zero it's going to cross. Then you go to the next factor. What would make this zero? So the opposite number to negative 2, that's positive 2. What's the exponent that you don't see? It's 1, which means it's going to cross. And we have one more. The next factor, what makes it 0? What's the opposite number to positive 2? And again, what's the exponent? And that's going to bounce rather than cross. 
The next thing I'm going to look at is the power term. If I go and I multiply this out, I know it's getting fuzzy. So if I go x times x times x squared, so x and then x and then x squared. Can you see x times x times x squared? That will give me the most powerful term. When you multiply, you add the exponents across. So if you add that, that's where x to the fourth comes from. 1 plus 1 plus 2. So what end behavior then? So we know it's positive. So we know the right end goes up. We know it's even. So both ends go in the same direction. So the right end also, left end also goes up. So I'm going to put these on our graph. So might as well. 0, 2, and negative 2. And I know both ends go up. So the left end goes up and the right end. We're just going to put this together like a puzzle. What else? Well, I know the y-intercept is the same as the x. It's crossing the y-axis at 0. Now, it bounces at 2. So it bounces at negative 2. So I know it's going to bounce here and create a minimum. But I don't know where it turns approximately. So I'm going to take a point in between the intercepts. So in this case, negative 1. And I'm going to plug it in and see what answer I get when I do that. So I'm going to do that up here. So negative 1, negative 1 subtract 2, negative 1 plus 2, and then solve it. So that's negative 1. Negative 1 take away 2 is negative 3. This is positive 1 squared. So altogether, a negative times a negative. This answer is 3. So find where 3 is. So now we know this part of what's happening. And it turns. Now, we know at 0 it's going to cross. But how far down does it go before it turns again? Again, I'm going to approximate by seeing the x value of where it's going to turn approximately, which is at positive 1 in between the intercepts. I'm going to do that right here. So again, I'm going to put in 1 for x. So 1, 1, take away 2, 1 plus 2 squared. So this is 1 times negative 1. And 1 plus 2 is 3. So we square first. That's 9. And so negative 1 will make it negative 9. So this is going to go down to negative 9. And we're going to use that as an approximate turning point. And then we're going to turn and then connect to what we already have. And you can see the end behavior, the intercepts, the turning points, and see how we put the puzzle together to approximate the curve. So we have a minimum at negative 2, 0. We also have a minimum here at 1 and negative 9. And if you type that into Desmos, there might be a decimal, like it may not exactly be at negative 9, but it's just an estimate. And then uh, we have a maximum here at negative 1 and 3. All right, let's try number 3. The more we practice, right, we'll get more comfortable with this. So let's start. What are the zeros? Go in the parentheses. What makes this zero? What's the opposite number to negative 1? Does it have an odd or an even exponent? which means it's going to cross at 1. Here, negative 2, and it has an even exponent, 2. So that means it's going to bounce. That's all we have. So at 1 and negative 2, the leading term, so if I went x cubed times x squared, add the exponents, what would be the power term or leading term? And what does that tell me about the end behavior? So it tells me the right end goes up, and it tells me the left end goes down. To find the y-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0. So I'm going to do that right here. It's 0, take away 1, and 0 plus 2. So negative 1 cubed, negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, it's actually a negative answer, 0 plus 2, and you square it as 4, so all together that gives me negative 4. So I'm going to put that here. I'm going to use it as a turning point, 
So I know the ends. We just said the right end goes up and the left end goes down. So we know it crosses at 1. It's going to turn. We could find another point lower. So I'm trying to think, if I plugged in negative 1, we could do that to get another point. So if I plugged in negative 1 to fill in more points in between the intercepts, this is what it would look like to be able to answer. So negative 1, take away 1. Negative 1 plus 2. So negative 2 cubed is going to be 2 times 2 times 2, or negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. And then negative 8 times 1. So we're going to go all the way to negative 8. And then we have our graph. So we have a maximum at negative 2, 0. We have a minimum at negative 1, negative 8. And that's it. We have 1 and 1, and we're done. All right, number 4. All right, x squared, if I plug in 0, the answer is 0, and it has an even exponent, which means it's going to bounce at 0. Positive 2, it has an odd exponent that's invisible, so it's going to cross. And then that, uh, the opposite number here to make it 0 is negative 2 with an even exponent, so it's going to bounce. So I can start there on my graph. I don't know where to start. So it's 0, it's 2, and negative 2. If I take x squared and I multiply it times x, and again times x squared, if I add the exponents, 2 plus 1 plus 2, the power term or leading term is x to the fifth. That means the right end goes up and the left end goes down. The y-intercept, if I plug in 0, if um, a 0 is the x-intercept, it will also be the y-intercept. It's already there, crossing there. So I'm going to put the ends here. So I know the right end goes up and the left end goes down. I'm going to fill in in between the intercepts. So what x values are in between the intercepts? So I have positive 1 and negative 1. So I'm going to start with positive 1. So if I have positive 1 squared, 1 take away 2, and then 1 plus 2 squared, I'm going to end up with 1 squared, 1 take away 2, and then 1 plus 2. And then I go 3 squared times negative 1 times 1. So negative 9. So at 1, it's going to go to negative 9. So now I know this part of the puzzle. And then it's going to come back up. So I know I have a minimum there. And then I'm going to plug in negative 1. So if I have negative 1 squared, negative 1, subtract 2, and negative 1 plus 2 squared, just one at a time. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. Negative 1 take away 2 is negative 3. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So put this all together, and the answer is negative 3. We double check, make sure you know it bounces at 0, and it bounces at negative 2, which it will. And then you have your graph. So I have a maximum at negative 2, 0. I have a minimum at negative 1 and negative 3. I have a maximum at 0, 0. And lastly, I have a minimum at 1, negative 9. All right, let's keep practicing. Can you tell me the zeros? So the opposite number. And it has an odd exponent, which means it's going to cross. The next is negative 2. It has an odd exponent, so it's going to cross. The next one's positive 3. It has an odd exponent. It's going to cross. If I go x times x times x, 
add across, that's x cubed. That's how many x's I have that I'm multiplying. That means the right end goes up because it's positive, and the left end goes down because it's an odd power term. So we have 1, we have negative 2, and uh, we have 3. And we know the right end goes up and the left end goes down. The y-intercept, this is not 0. So if I plug in 0, 0 take away 1, 0 plus 2, 0 take away 3. It's negative 1 times 2 times negative 3. And eventually you get to a negative times a negative. So the y-intercept's at 6. We're going to fill in with the other points too. So I'm going to fill in with positive 2. So that's 2 take away 1, 2 plus 2, and 2 take away 3. That's 1 times 4 times negative 1. That's negative 4. That's what 2 and negative 4. Uh, the other x uh, value I want to solve to find to see a turning point maybe is negative 1. So I'm going to go negative 1 take away 1. Uh, negative 1 plus 2. Negative 1 take away 3. So that's negative 2, that's 1, and that's negative 4. So a negative times a negative, that's 8. So we're going to go all the way to 8. Oops, at 1 I mean, to 8, there it is. So I'm going to connect the points together. I have a y-intercept, I have other points. And now all the pieces together, so the whole roller coaster is all now connected. So we have a maximum, we're at negative 1 and 8. We have a minimum at 2 and negative 4. And that's it. All right, last one here for the lesson. And then there's homework to practice. See if you can practice on your own. So 0, and it has an odd exponent, so it's going to cross. Positive 2, again, it has an odd exponent, so it's going to cross. And negative 2 has an even exponent, so it's going to bounce. If I go x times x times x squared and add the exponents across, that's 4. What does that mean? That means the right end goes up and the left end goes down. No, both ends go up. So the right end goes up, the left end goes up. If I plug in 0, if this is 0, this is 0. So I'll put that on here. It crosses the x and y at the same point. And we have 2 and negative 2. And I said both ends go up. I'm going to plug in the x values in between the intercepts. So that's at positive 1 and negative 1. So I'll start with positive 1. So 1, 1, take away 2, 1 plus 2 and then solve it. That's 1 times negative 1 and then 1 plus 2 is 3 and we square it. So 3 squared is 9 times negative 1. So at 1 the answer is negative 9. Then the next one I'm going to plug in uh, negative 1. I'll do that underneath here. So that's negative 1, negative 1 subtract 2, negative 1 plus 2 and square it. So that gives me negative 1, negative 3, and then positive 1 squared. So all together that's 4. And then connect. So remember it bounces and then it crosses and then it crosses. And then connect the piece together. So we have a maximum at negative 1 and 4. We have a minimum here at 1 and negative 9. Oh, and we have another minimum here at negative 2 and 0. You did it. All right. Mr. G Math over and out. Then we'll do our homework too. Hopefully this helped and the homework will help. I'm proud of you for not giving up and trying to graph.